you beautiful miracles all around the globe. My name is Lisa Jans and I'm also known as Job Coach Germany. So in case you were wondering why the Germans are quite quiet today on social media, so whether that is on LinkedIn, Instagram or wherever, is because we have a bank holiday in entire Germany. And um, yeah, it's basically a Christian holiday, which we call Christi Himmelfahrt. Um, but in the area where I live, especially, uh, we are um, not so much celebrating this Christian holiday, but rather we call it Father's Day or also the Day of the Men. And um, that's why... Um, Yeah, the downloads are and um, as you can see, I'm in my I don't have any clientings today either. It's just that I'm taking some time to talk to you guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. And I would like to talk to you today about uh, schools again. So about the German education system. But before we start with that, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the bank holiday. So Father's Day, and I can hear all of my neighbors. They are sitting in the garden having a barbecue, even though the weather is not so good. So actually, it's quite cloudy and stormy, but um, there hasn't been any rain yet. And that's why they are having barbecues. But what happens is that a lot of men, especially younger ones that don't have any children yet, um go for a little walk or a hike even you could say and they are taking a lot of beer along on their journey and um so if you are on the roads today in germany just please be very careful because it might be that you pop into some some uh, drunk people and um what we normally do in my family is that we spend the day together and we go for a bicycle tour um i think last year we were in hanover so there's a really cool lake where you can go around and then we uh, normally go with uh, mountain bikes or just simply my my parents take their their e-bikes with them and um yeah so that's normally what we do but unfortunately because my brother and I are working today uh, it's not possible so uh, we will probably um celebrate yeah father's day with our family on, over the weekend um so and then uh yeah so that's basically why everybody is quiet in, on here today but i'm here and i'm not quiet so let's talk about schools um and i found a couple of things from my school time so first of all um this is a cd that um my elementary school actually um recorded and it was uh, for the 100 year celebration so the 100 year anniversary of my elementary school which was called Gleim Schule and um we basically had a um yeah we we had a, a music teacher who was um um, basically, she wrote a song for us and her husband was actually, I think, if I remember correctly, the drummer of Udo Lindenberg's band. And if you know any German artists, well, Udo Lindenberg is one of the biggest artists and every German knows him. Um, so, one, well, actually, so my uh, former elementary school music teachers husband boyfriend maybe ex-partner i don't know anymore um was uh, used to be in the band of udo lindenberg and he helped um produce this song basically so they came up with a melody and uh, with a text and so on so we were um yeah simply uh, celebrating the 100 years uh, anniversary of our school so that i think that's really cool i'll definitely listen to that and then um last time la i think it was last week or two two weeks ago i was talking about the german education system in general and i myself went through this general german education system so and um very early on i decided to go to the gymnasium which is kind of like a grammar school or higher school and uh, for that we go to school until we're 18 or 17 18 19 and then we finish school and then we are basically prepared for the for going to university and for that in the far uh, last three years um so maybe you've heard about our grades or grading system so 
from first, well, in first grade, we don't get any grades yet. But in second grade, second term, we start getting grades. So in first grade, it's more like smileys or little bees and just some sort of uh, doodly action that's going on to see your progress. And the teacher is writing a text about the student. And then from second grade, second term up to 10th grade, we have... Um, numbers such as one, which is equivalent to the US high school or the US system, an A. Um, and then we have up to six. So six, um, six and five means you haven't passed it. And everything from one to four means you have passed it. So um, one is A, two is B, three is C, four is D, then E is five and F is six or six is f basically yeah um so this is basically how the grading system is working in germany and in uh 10th 11th and 12th grade uh, when you are still at the gymnasium this changes again so the numbers are then from zero zero up to 15 where 15 is an a plus and zero zero is an f basically and that's basically what you then get so i still kept that it's called studienbuch it basically means study book, but it doesn't really make any sense because you're not doing any studies yet, like in university, but in school. And then you basically have different terms. So you you put your picture in it and then uh, you describe which kind of majors you have, because that's what we decide, majors and minors, um, in, in these three years already. Um, and for me, it was German, English, uh, th those were basically my majors. And then I also had three other minors that, that were math, bilingual history. So I had history, but in English. So basically, um, the teacher was speaking English. And then the last one was social studies. Um, and then you basically enter all of the uh, all of the numbers. And here you can see, let me think about that. I don't even know which grade that is. Ooh, maybe it was 10th, 9th grade or something like that. Yeah, must have been must have been 10th grade. So this is basically what it looks like. So you have the numbers, you have the subjects, and then you get that. And then you see there is no more writing of the teacher. Um, and the same happens for the second term. And then once you are in what we call... Um, Kursstufe, so it's kind of like the, uh, the the stage where you are being prepared for for uh, the yeah the final stage of your high school of your grammar school and being prepared for uh, university and you can this uh, can um, compare that it's similar to AP classes in the US system and then it looks like that so you can see that you don't just have uh, classes but you also write what kind of teacher you have and then you're writing what kind of um, subject you had so in that particular class so let's take a look at English and then we had the human experience and then you have the grade so I got a 14 which is very good it's an A uh, it was basically one of my favorite topics, right? And then you have, again, the name of the teacher and the, the signature of the teacher. So the teachers then had to um, sign each of the grades that you got, okay? Um, and that happens for each half year. And then you go for four terms, basically. So four half years. And then at the end, you get the grade that uh, you that you have. And um, yeah, so I thought that was really cool. And then once you go out of school, obviously, you, um, you probably have heard of the yearbooks in... Um, in the United States, but in the United States, you can get the yearbook every year. And then you are writing in there, oh, it's so nice and wish you a great summer, see you again, or maybe don't see you again. And that is something that we don't have. Well, maybe some schools do, but mine didn't. Uh, my gymnasium just did that, or basically our class, our grade, um, organized that themselves for kind of like a leaving yearbook. And that's what it looked like. So basically we came up with a motto and our motto was Abi Rouge Rotstift Milieu, which doesn't really make any sense to you. So it's basically kind of like a, a mixture of Abitur, which basically means it's the entry, 
the entry certificate to be able to go to university, Abi is the short version, and Rouge is from uh, Moulin Rouge. So we kind of like use some sort of French Moulin Rouge motto for uh, that time uh, because, so we called it red pen uh, field, you could call it basically because that's what teachers use when they are grading your texts or your your exams. They use a red pen. I don't know whether they are using red pens where you are. but you. And then basically what this is all about, you can see there are lots of pictures and um, names and texts of people. So uh, basically what happens is that we are writing texts about our teachers and then we are also writing texts about our best friend or the best friend is writing a text about me or you can write basically texts in a sort of uh, group. And um, yeah, and then you can also upload some pictures. And that was basically my page. So my friend Anna wrote the text about me and then I uploaded some pictures and that's what you have so that you have uh, some sort of um, yeah memory of your entire uh, school or and your, your grade. But let's dive into the topic of today. So we're staying with the school topic, but there was one of you who asked me about Waldorf schools. Um, and that is a, an, an alternative way of schooling. So kind of what we call free schools. And for that, I um, collected some information for you guys, which I want to share. But I'm going to look a little bit to the right. So don't worry that I'm not looking at you directly. I know that you're here. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments but i'm uh, simply reading the articles to you and i've linked all the all the articles below if you want to read about that again and now my question um if you hear anything that interests you very much let me know send me a message or write a comment um so that i can dive more into detail we will just take a brief look at all the options that are here in germany currently so a brief overview and if you want to learn more about any of those particular schools in detail let me know and i actually wanted to take the time to talk to you about that um because obviously my background is also in education, pedagogy and education. That's what I've studied in my two master's degrees. So my one of my master's was Master of Science in International Vocational Education, and another one was Master of Arts in Education. And it basically is designed to for me to be an educator within a company. Yeah, but also I have a lot of my former colleagues who can, who are currently and nowadays working in schools. Yeah, um, because obviously, as I said, our school system is very flexible. You can always switch. Um, and nowadays we have a huge lack of skilled workers and especially also uh, a huge lack of teachers, which is why you can nowadays do some additional courses um, and then uh, jump into the uh, teaching profession as well. And then and that's basically what what I could also do if I wanted to. Um, yeah. So. You were asking about alternative schooling. So I won't talk just about Waldorf, but I will talk about different schools. Um, and for that, it's important for you to know, first of all, that all of the other free schools, Waldorf schools, Montessori schools, and so on, um, are classed as private schools. Okay, so um, I started school in, let me think, I think 1996, if I don't, <laughs> if I remember correctly. And in 1996, 1997, that was basically my first year in school, we had roughly, um, let me see, 3,700 private schools. So I got this data from Statista. Statista is a really, really cool website for anybody that is interested in data. Uh, and you can find lots and lots of overviews on all sorts of things that you want to know, like unemployment rate or youth unemployment rate, schools and so on, and uh, different jobs, um, also immigrants, expats, internationals, and so on. That's what you can find. And if you want to have the German site, it's just de.statista.com. So in 1996-1997, we had 3,700 schools, and this has risen now in the last year. So from 2020-2021, we now have 5,855 private schools. 
Okay, so what do I mean by that? Um, private schools. Okay, so just give me a second. Need to find the right right page here. Okay, so this is, I think that's it. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Okay, let me quickly, one second, bear with me. Thank you, guys. Okay, ah, hold on. There is, there's always ads. I hate that. Okay, so according to the federal government's current education report, the 30,600 normal schools with public sponsors are opposed to um, private sponsors. And as I said, the private sponsors are now 5,855. Uh, no, 5, Around 9% uh, of all students in Germany now go to a private school. So we there is a difference between church schools, for example, then we also have international schools and reform schools. And reform schools are the topic that um, uh, that you were interested in, that you asked me about. Yeah, so Waldorf, for example, is um, a category or a part of reform schools. Now, the church schools, um, the largest group of private schools are denominational schools of the Christian church. About 2,000 schools from elementary school to vocational school are maintained by the Protestant or the Catholic Church. Although faith is not a prerequisite for the visit, religion naturally plays a major role there and values such as charity are clearly the focus of education. Otherwise, there are no significant differences in terms of curricula, degrees or teaching methods. So, and then the international schools. Um, there are also schools that increasingly promote individual talents, such as sports grammar schools. International schools are particularly popular, where your foreign language skills are challenged and promoted to the maximum in English language or bilingual classes. Most of these schools are also modeled after the American or British school system. So you don't do the German Abitur there, but the International Baccalaureate Diploma. Um, okay, now what, before we dive into these reform schools, I want to share with you the pricing of those private schools. So it's not for all of them. If you want, if you are thinking about sending your children to a private school, obviously you want to make sure to find out what fees are involved, but private schools normally always have fees and those range between, uh, from 50 to 100 euros up to, uh, several thousand euros yeah uh, so you should definitely make sure that you find out the cost of that particular school that you want to send your child to now if you want to become a teacher because the, the person that contacted me regarding uh, the life that I that I was asked to do on world of schools is interested in being a teacher at world of schools now if you're a teacher at world of schools obviously you are being paid <laughs> um, and every teacher is being paid but it's basically depending on whether you're being paid through public funding, through through taxes, or through um, the private funding. Yeah, but uh, anyway, uh, if you decide to be a teacher in one of those reform schools, that's obviously because you're very much interested in that topic, and you can you you like the way how uh, the school ideology works, basically. Now, with regards to the private schools, the cheapest way to get away is probably at a denominational school. You can usually get there with 50 to 100 euros a month, and some institutions do not charge any school fees at all. State-funded private schools charge an average of 100 euros per month, although you have to add costs for food, which makes it more like uh, 200 to 400 euros per month. Yeah, and you should always think about that. I remember that my parents also had to pay, even though I was always in, in public school, my parents had to pay for food because obviously you're being provided, especially in, in elementary school, you get lunch, you get some sort of little milk drinks for breakfast and all of these things. So your parents have to pay for that. So it's not entirely free. So you need to make sure that you are aware of all of the costs that are involved once you send your child to a particular school. At non-state funded private schools, the average cost is up to 850 euros per month, but then including the ancillary costs. It usually gets really expensive at the international schools. You have to plan between 4,000 and 18,000 
euros per school year. But there are also a few exceptions, such as the free John F. Kennedy German American Community School in Berlin. Okay, so if you are in Berlin and you happen to have a child that wants to go there or you want to send your child there, then you're lucky. Okay, now let's take a look at the um, reform schools. Waldorf was yesterday. Frené. Jena Plan or Club of Rome schools as alternatives. So basically, as we can see, education is always developing, schools are developing, um, or at least we are hoping that they are developing in different uh, air, uh, directions. We have different generations, different styles, different methods of how teachers teach, how students learn, and so on. And this is basically um evolving yeah which is why what was uh, uh like waldorf was maybe 20 years very like i remember so let's let's take a step back before i start talking about that um so when i was still in school because i went to public school i always thought i was very arrogant and ignorant i to be honest because i thought everybody that goes to an alternative school is kind of Mm, stupid, I would say. That's basically what I thought back in the day. And um, then I um, went to an American high school, as I told you. Yeah. And there I got in touch firsthand how schools actually uh, integrate people of different learning difficulties and also... Um, physical disabilities into a normal high school. Uh, so I know that one of my neighbors had um, a mental illness, but she was still able to go to school with us. Um, she didn't, I didn't go to, to uh, all of the classes with her, but I know that if I, for example, had taken some sort of cooking class, I know that she took that class and I could have um, interacted with her. And I really like that. I really like that integrative approach in schools, but I never came across when I was still here in Germany, when I was still in public school, I never came across this system because with us it is, um, completely differentiated so we have those public schools and as soon as the teachers realize that you have some sort of difficulty or disability they will make sure that they kind of separate you or um yeah so for example if you have dyslexia normally what happens is that you go to a second uh, in second grade you go to a a specialized dyslexia school and in Germany dyslexia is not a disability but it's kind of like a learning difficulty that's how they class it yeah um, but still this child is sent to a different school for a certain amount of time until it has learned some coping uh, strategies in order to um, still be able to go along in school yeah sometimes what happens is that uh, the students um, uh, miss one year so they have to repeat one one year in in school because they are not up to speed with the learning uh like with the curriculum what they're supposed to learn now then if we have students with mental uh, illnesses we have special schools for mental illnesses and then there are also schools for physical uh, disab disabilities. So basically everything is separated and the, the students are not integrated in our other schools. Um, so for in, I remember in the city where I am, in uh, where I uh, went to school, there was a very, and there is still nowadays, I think, a school that is very popular for um, deaf and blind students, and that is very rare. So in the entirety of Saxony Anhalt, where I basically live, um, that's the school uh, where deaf and blind students would go to. So that includes that they have to stay at the school probably throughout the week and only can go home on the weekends. Yeah, so it's kind of like a boarding school because it's so far away. Yeah, so those those um, schools are basically limited. Now, back to Lisa, a stupid teenager that was ignorant and arrogant. I thought that everybody that goes to a Waldorf school is um, 
stupid, which is definitely not the case. And nowadays, obviously, first of all, my year in the US American high school taught me that it's really good to integrate people from different um, learning standards and learning abilities or disabilities, uh, because it obviously uh, makes you more aware of different people, different personalities and different ways how people act and learn. Then I went on holiday with my parents. We went to Bali, I think, um, and we met a girl that um, <laughs> liked my brother very much. And we got in touch with, uh, with her and her mom. And she told us that she is um, at a Waldorf school and that she is uh, basically able, that she's very free in whatever she's doing and that she can pursue those things that she's very much interested in. And um, I remember that I was really impressed by that because she um, wasn't forced to learn certain things that she didn't want to learn, but she was able to fully engage and increase her skills in those fields that she was really interested in. And she was a, what we call, she's nowadays what we call a conditor. So basically a person that can make cakes, but like really like, like cakes that you would expect at a huge massive wedding at, or at fairs. So she is really talented. And that was when I had a switch in my head and I thought, wow, that's just, just very impressive. And then obviously at some point I also went into uh, studying more about pedagogy, more about education. And that's when I learned about those alternative ways. And I have to admit having studied about the education system in Germany, having studied about alternative ways and how the pedagogy has developed, how teaching skills have developed, I now have to admit that I'm a massive fan of all of those alternative schools because I, so, and I'm not a big fan of the public school system anymore because it's just, it for me, it feels like students are being pressed and into a box and then they come out a certain way. If, the, if you don't fit into that box, unfortunately, you have to, you, you're probably breaking down either personally or you have to break out of school and then you drop out or something else happens. Um, so I'm a massive fan of um, enabling the individual. Yeah. And uh, that is what happens at those alternative schools. Now, the reason why I think that our public schools are lacking in my eyes is pe simply because they are not developing at all. So teachers get their set of curriculum that they have to teach no matter what happens. They have to pressure the students through that. There are exams and they are like across the board. They are like if there is the um, if there is this massive exam for math, for example, it's the same exam in entirety of Germany, whether you had a great math teacher or not, whether you are good at math or not, it's the same exam in the entirety of Germany, and they're all writing it on the same day, okay? Um, so um, basically what happens is that you have to, uh, yeah, so teachers are pressured, students are pressured, and nobody is really taking into consideration what uh, the student can thrive of. Um, and I remember, and it's still, I think nowadays, like in the, in the what they always call the, um, the newer areas of Germany, basically the former GDR, uh, are those places where there is um, some sort of centralized abitur and you didn't have a choice, you had to write math you had to write the math exam. But whereas when you go to Bavaria, for example, it's not the, the same. You could, uh, Bavaria other and other states in Germany, you could also just simply focus on languages. And I always, I thought that was really unfair for me because if I were to just simply write or, or take all the exams in the classes that I were good at, such as all the languages, I would have had a definitely better overall grade even though my grade was great, was very good. Yeah, I'm satisfied with what I got. But at that time, I was still very, I thought that was unfair. And also that it has a ripple effect because the grade, like the overall average that you have once you leave school um, has, uh, yeah, will impact 
what kind of university spot you get. Yeah, so um, obviously, if you can take exams in all of the classes that you are comfortable with and that you're good at, you have a better, better overall grade and can choose which kind of university you want to get in. For us, where we had to take math, for example, um, and other classes that you were probably not good at, um, it was more difficult to achieve those grades in order to get into those schools or the universities you wanted to get in. So it's kind of difficult. I hope you, uh, I didn't lose you at this point. But so from my point of view, the school system, the public school system, hasn't changed for hundreds of years. Um, and it's just terrible that it's not evolving around and, and not more designed around the student. Yeah, it's basically still there is an institution, the KMK, who sets up um, the, uh, the curriculum. Then it's passed on to the teachers and you can see lots and lots of uh, uh, YouTube YouTubers um, of teachers so or students who want to become a teacher and they feel lost. They feel lost. They are not. They don't feel prepared. They don't feel well well enough prepared to actually be a teacher in our public schools. Yeah, just imagine that. I think that's highly disturbing again. But that's just simply because we've always done it in that way. So simply stick to that. And um, that's why nowadays I'm a massive fan of alternative schooling. I'm a. I'm also always very interested in uh, homeschooling, which is not an option in Germany. It's illegal to homeschool your child in Germany. Uh, if you want to homeschool your child, many people go to France, to be honest. Yeah. Or they just simply leave the country and um, do homeschooling then on their own in a different country. But in Germany, it's not possible. Um, I think under very certain circumstances. Um, but it's it's basically not allowed. Um, but I'm always very interested in homeschooling. So whenever I meet someone and I know that like the host family of my brother, um, they are homeschooling. Like one of them is homeschooling their child or their children. And that's always a topic that I really love to listen to and hear about. But um, the alternative ways um, or the reform schools, as they are called, are just simply... Um, more designed around the student, more designed around the individual uh, as such. And that's what I'm interested in. So if I ever have a child, I don't know yet um, whether I will have children or not. At the, at the moment, I don't want to, but um, we, will, we will see in the future. Ask me again in 10 years. I would definitely want to send my child to an alternative school, a reform school. But who knows what the system, what the school system looks like in uh, several years. Yeah. So but basically, if I had to choose and um, were able to send my like choose what kind of school my child could go to, I would definitely use one of those uh, alternative schools, one of those reform schools. Now, let's take a look at that. So there are. Um, Waldorf schools, Montessori, Frenet, Jena Plan, Club of Rome, Democratic School, Dorton Plan, and Mehlhorn School. Now, let's take an, uh, I will give you a quick overview first and then read a little text about that. So, Waldorf School, it says no grades and no sitting down. Montessori, promote self determined learning. Frenet, promote the individuality of the children. Jena Plan, the school becomes a place of life. Club of Rome, focus on sustainable future of humanity. Democratic school, children's participation encouraged. Dalton Plan, learn better by doing it yourself. And Mehlhorn, creativity is required. So that's basically the overall overview. Now let's Go back to Waldorf School, no grades and no sitting down. The Waldorf schools are probably the best known alternative school form and are also called Rudolf Steiner schools after their founder. The principle of the Waldorf schools is the development of practical, artistic, creative and social skills. The guiding principle is receive the child with reverence, raise it with love and release it in freedom. There are no grades, nobody stays seated. Pupils attend the Waldorf School for 12 years from the first grade. The degree is not recognized by the state. After the 12th grade, 
well, those students can obtain a Realschule or Hauptschule certificate from an external examiner. If you want to do the Abitur, you have to go to school for one more year. The Waldorf uh, School relies on the commitment of the parents and is suitable for children who are sensitive and suffer from the pressure to perform at other schools. Now, the Montessori School promotes self-determined learning. The Italian doctor Maria Montessori developed the pedagogical, pedagogical approach for this alternative type of school at the end of the 19th century. According to the guiding principle, help me to do it myself, it is important to encourage children to act and make decisions independently. The focus is on the child's urge to explore. Pupils can decide which topic they want to cover for, how long and to what extent. In addition to free work and project work, there's also group work in mixed age groups. In the Montessori school, children can learn through play. In addition to primary and special schools, there are secondary schools so that students can acquire any degree. The change to Realschule or Gymnasium is possible with an entrance exam. The Frenet Schule promote the individuality of the children. In the Frenet Schule, pupils and teachers form a class council in order to make joint decisions. And it's Frenet because the founder is French. The focus is on the children's critical examination of their environment. In personal work plans, students have, the, have to determine what they want to learn in the near future. In the weekly class meeting, it is determined whether, to work, whether the work plan has been adhered to. The individual support of the students is based on the principles of personality development or, or personal development, environmental awareness, per responsibility and co students gain hands-on experience in everyday life and exploration. Since these are primary schools, the children receive a recommendation for a secondary school. Pupils only get grades before they change schools. Jena Plan School. The school becomes a place of life. Based on the four pillars of talk, play, work and celebration, the school should become a place of life. This alternative type of school imparts a compulsory subject matter in the course. In the regular lessons, in which students from three grades come together, the contents of the course lessons are deepened. In discussion groups, the students discuss problems and make democratic decisions. The sense of community plays an important role and is de deepened through breakfast, lunch and weekly celebrations. Joint projects can be presented and awarded at the festivals. This alternative type of school does not award grades up to the seventh grade. Children who do not feel comfortable in state schools but have no problems with the subject matter are addressed with the Jena Plan School. Students can earn any school leaving certificate. And here now I'm not so sure, but I shared like in, um, you maybe remember that I'm uh, currently doing a review of this book and there is uh, the ESBZ school uh, in Germany as well. And this is also an alternative school. Um, when I'm talking about the book, you will uh, learn which kind of alternative school they are. Now, Club of Rome School, focus on sustainable future of humanity. This alternative form of school is committed to, to the sustainable future of mankind. Important topics are sustainable development and the protection of ecosystems. Holistic educational concepts and learning beyond the school horizon play an important role. Children should be supported with their strengths and weaknesses and strengthened in their self-confidence. The holistic concept includes teamwork, learning laboratories, respect, personal responsibility, musical support, and lots of exercise. There are 15 such schools in Germany. There are community schools, elementary schools, comprehensive schools, and high schools, so that every degree is possible. The alternative type of school is suitable for students who do well at state schools, at state schools but want to gain lasting experience. The democratic school, children's participation encouraged. This alternative type of school is characterized by the fact that there is no fixed curriculum and the students can arrange their daily routine according to their interests. Students can choose different projects, courses and activities and also visit extracurricular learning places. Self-determined learning with all your heart without pressure. That's what is asked. As chaotic as it may seem, it is structured. 
teachers and students have equal voting rights in a weekly school assembly and make joint decisions. The aim of the democratic school is an intermediate school certificate for which the students are prepared for an external examination. If you want to go to high school and do the Abitur, you have to pass the exam well. The alternative form of school is not focused on grades and degrees. It is suitable for all children, but some parents have difficulties accepting the self-determined concept. Now, I think there are two more left. Yeah. Dalton Plan School. Learn better by doing it yourself. Independence is a priority at the Dalton Plan School. The concept for this alternative form of school came from Helen Parkhurst, who worked closely with Maria Montessori at the beginning of the, ninth, of the 20th century. Children are given free time to design. At the beginning of each school year, they receive a work package that they have to work through independently in weekly steps by the end of the, of the school year. Um, yeah, so they have weekly steps and they have to finish it by the end of the school year. The children are given grades based on the results of their written work. The teachers are available to the children as learning assistants. In Germany, there are still no pure Dalton plan schools. However, the concept is, issue, is used by some mainstream schools. Since these schools are heavily focused on written work, children need to learn a lot um, to have um, self-discipline. Yeah. Uh, and now the last but not least, Mehlhorn School, creativity is required. The concept for this alternative type of school is still quite new, as the first school was only founded in 1997 by Hans-Georg and Gerlinde Mehlhorn. Based on the three pillars of talent, intelligence and personality, this alternative type of school is also known as BIP. So, ah, as BIP Creativity School. Mm. Why is it BIP? Intelligence, personality, and what's the B for? Hmm. Interesting. I will take a look at that. <laughs> uh, from the first grade, children have to learn to play a musical instrument outside of school. In addition to the state curriculum, there are subjects such as English, two other foreign languages, one of which is non-European, chess, computer science, linguistic design, performing game, uh, or like gaming, then musical creation, artistic design, dance and movement. There are grades from the first school year. If a grade is worse than two, the children receive support measures. These are all day schools. The desired school leaving certificate is the Abitur. This alternative type of school is only suitable for inquisitive and persevering children with the appropriate talent. Okay, so. The conclusion here of this article is a multitude of alternatives. You can see that there are numerous alternative schools and that it might be difficult for parents and children to choose the right alternative school. Most of the alternatives focus on independence, self-determination and individual support. Many schools appeal to children who do not feel comfortable in mainstream schools. So basically my resume or my conclusion of this all, my summary, to put it into a nutshell, would be that um, I'm a fan of alternative schooling compared to public schools because of the pressure. Yeah, so uh, for me, it was easy to go to pu through public school and I really enjoyed my school time, but I, I'm really uh, sad and devastated about the fact how many children we have from elementary school onwards that are already suffering from burnout. And that is simply due to pressure, pressure from their uh, teachers, from their peers, from the teacher uh, and parents. Yeah. So and that's basically that, something that I don't like. And you always have to think about if the teacher is asking the parent that um, they have to help them to uh, do their homework. I think children should have time to play. Yeah, I'm also not a huge fan of homework, to be honest. Yeah, but I think that's a um, uh, a discussion that we can have and everybody has their own opinion, but that is mine. So I don't like the public schools anymore, um, even though I went through it. But it's basically uh, some people say those who are very... Um, uh, hard working and studying, like basically sitting down and and uh, studying and learning by heart, and those who will get a, along with the teachers very well. Um, so brown nosers, basically, and I definitely was a brown noser, to be honest. Uh, not in a 
not in a manipulative way, but it's just the way how I am due to the fact that I'm very empathetic. Um, it was easier for me. For those who were not brown noses, who were not studying hard, it is difficult. And um, I can say that at the end of my school life, I definitely had a lot of knowledge, um, but it was not individualized. It was not according to my needs. It was not according to my talents. That is something that I realized very much later on. Yeah, during my, um, during my, if I had been individually supported through the school, I would have definitely not chosen to study the bachelor's that I did in management and economics because it was totally out of my range. It was totally out of line for me and it was a complete disaster to go through this. Um, I still manage it because I'm hardworking, but it's not the way how I see it. And the only thing when I realized uh, what I love learning about was when I started learning uh, and studying management and my international vocational education masters. That's when I realized, oh, actually studying can be fun. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but throughout my entire time at the Abitur, I have been pressurized to the teachers, my parents, my uh, the society in general, my peers and myself. And we had a huge... Um, we had a great potential in my class as well. So all of my colleagues uh, in like my former classmates were really bright. They were all brilliant. They all were very well educated at the end when we got out of school, but we were all the same. Yeah, kind of like little robots. And that's also, as I said, something that I've mentioned in this book. And we will uh, talk about the next chapter tomorrow. Um, but that's something that I want you to keep in mind. Yeah, so for me, I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can uh, think about what is right for you. But for me, um, it's definitely going to be an alternative school if I ever have to choose, um, because I'm not a fan of pressurizing children anymore. We should enable our children for more independence, self-determination and individual individuality. And obviously showing them how to deal with certain topics that are not even a part of the curriculum, such as finances, such as um, uh, work-life balance and mental health and how to uh, take breaks and definitely how to grow your own plants and how to how to go out in nature because obviously we are in a digital age and we're using our computers all day but hardly anybody knows how to uh yeah water a plant <laughs> so uh, that's definitely something that i would be interested in um i hope uh, this was interesting to you. So again, my uh, question for you all is, if you are interested in one of those schools in more detail, let me know, send me a message, uh, write a comment, and I will uh, for sure make another live on that if you're interested in that because obviously my educational background i'm really interested in those topics even though they're only partially related to job coaching but it's obviously a part of that because first of all job coaching might be of interest to you if you want to become a teacher in germany that's fine you can contact me if you need your if you need help with regards to your job application and the entire job application process and also the education system in general and the alternative ways are important for you to know in order to understand what the people that are in our workforce nowadays in Germany have gone through. Yeah. So I hope you found that um, interesting and let me know what you think, whether you have a favorite version or a favorite school so far. And um, yeah, thank you very much for spending this uh, wonderful uh, day this wonderful holiday uh, with me today and I'll speak to you hopefully tomorrow thank you and bye bye